will be forced to answer truthfully. Chat, stop asking questions. It's not time for the Madrina's Q&A yet. So zoomed in. I hate it when it's zoomed in because I can see how ugly I am. Ooh, is that what I look like? God, how do you guys even look at this face? You guys ever um, accidentally open the camera on your phone, and the front camera, and it's pointing at your face, and you're like, "Who? You're like, get out of here." That's how I feel when I'm like streaming as well. I look to the right and see my camera. I'm like, oh God, who is that? All right, we will be joined by a lovely lady called Sue, who's gonna help us read the questions. This way I don't have to read the question myself because I'm super lazy. What personality trait do you want your potential partner to have? Again, okay, first of all, are you asking for yourself? A friend? Is this a hypothetical question? Are you a hot girl? If so, I will answer that question. If not, please wait until the Q&A section. All I can say is the bigger, the better. I'm talking about the brain, of course. Oh, look, the little uh, pop up work. That's cute. That's my notification for when someone buys my coffee. All right. <clears throat> it is six o'clock. I need to put hashtag ad on my title because I don't want to get sued. Is this number three? This is number three, right? Q and A with disguise toast sponsored by Madrinas, Madrinas, exclamation mark, coffee. Boom. Oh, wait, I forgot to do hashtag ad. Hashtag ad. Okay, here we go. Um, and, okay, mixed product, yes. Chat, today's Q&A section for the next hour is sponsored by Madrinas, who I have partnered up with to make my very own gourmet coffee flavor. Focus, focus. Oh, I have autofocus turned off. Madrinas X Disguise Toast Code Brew French Toast Coffee. It's real simple to make. All you gotta do is get yourself a little bottle or a cup, whatever you like to use. I like to use the shaker. If I pour the water in like this. And all you gotta do is put in one scoop. I mean, sometimes I like to do half a scoop because I don't like drinking too much caffeine. Sometimes I do half a scoop. You don't have to drink a whole scoop if you don't want that much caffeine. Bada boom. Close it up. 
and give that a real good shake. <sighs> Smells like French toast. So this one is super sweet. So if you like super sweet coffee, this is for you. Mm. Yeah, little cinnamon, cinnamony flavor with it. So I drink that every uh, every time before I go to the gym. I drink it because I need sugar and I don't like eating fruits. So before I go to the gym, I always need sugar and caffeine. So this one kind of hits perfectly. All right. Let's get to the questions featuring this week's uh, guest, Sue, who would be helping me with the question. Let me see if I can video call her. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Thank you for helping out today. Of course. I have to warn you, um, my seal broke. Your seal? Yeah, you know how uh, when you drink, your seal can break? Like drink alcohol or drink liquids in general? So I first discovered this because of alcohol. But I found out that the same thing occurs when you drink a lot of coffee. Once your seal breaks, you have to fucking pee all the time. <laughs> and while I was waiting to speak with you, I was drinking your coffee and my fucking seal broke. And I've, I've had to pee like three fucking times in the last hour. So if I go at my eight, it's because my seal broke. <laughs> wait, wait, so wait, what seal though? Like, wait, are you serious? You've never had this happen to you? My seal, like, like seal, like, right. like a cover thing. Chat, you guys know what it means when your seal fucking breaks. Tell me you know. No, I've never heard that expression before. Maybe it's because you haven't been an alcoholic DJ like I have. But basically what happens is when you consume a lot of either alcohol or caffeine or whatever it is, your seal breaks and then you just have to pee non-stop. You haven't had this happen, are you serious? Like, is this seal in your body? I mean, <laughs> I was about to make a hymen joke, but um, I, I realize you don't have one of those. Um, oh, I guess, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Chat, ignore what I just said. Uh, anyway, it's a, it's a hypothetical seal, but basically once you start consuming a lot of liquids, um, you just gotta pee all the fucking time, you know. Oh, okay. So, did did you pee before we got started? Or are you just holding it in now? No, no, no. I mean, yeah, I did pee. I peed like three times already, but the seal broke, so I might have to go again. Um, but it, it is all good. It is all good. Are you ready for your first question? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> To be fair, everyone's probably like, who's this random Asian girl talking about seals and hymens? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sue. I also go by my gaming handle, Smix. I'm a boomer, so I'm fucking old. I've been hosting and in gaming for a very, very long time. I've done things in StarCraft, Counter-Strike, and most recently, Valorant. So if you've watched the VCT broadcast, I've been there quite a few times doing desk hosting as well as interviews. And now... I'm here to work with Jeremy and um, just answer some questions and make him very uncomfortable by talking about seal breaking. Mm -hmm. Wait, so you're from CSGO and Valorant, then you must know my uh, bestie Tarek, right? I've known Tarek for seven years now. Seven years, uh, wow. Is there anything embarrassing you can tell us about him? Because like, you know, he, he's kind of a meme in my chat. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Man, this would be a really good opportunity if I had one to just bring it out, but unfortunately, he's been nothing but pleasant and kind in our interactions together. I know. It's disappointing. That's cringe. Uh, now someone's going to clip this and send it to him. He's going to get a big <laughs> ego. But, but to be fair, it's because most of my interactions with him for the bulk of the seven years was just on stage for like a quick two-minute interview where, you know, he gave very... PR answers and shared nothing about the actual strategy behind why they won. Mm -hmm. 
I also noticed you called me Jeremy. Oh, is that is, bad? No, it's totally fine. I think you are the only person in my life that calls me Jeremy. Oh, it's because I don't like it when people call me Smix. I prefer when people call me Sue. Mm -hmm. So, but what I, about, I figure no what double about standards. what I prefer? I think I asked you once and you said you're okay with Jeremy. I would mm -hmm. not do anything without your consent. <laughs> yeah, Sue's the only person who calls me Jeremy. Oh, what the fuck am I saying right now? I, I I have to apologize. I'm really out of it. I was on a flight today, so thank God for Majuna's coffee because I needed to chug it before I got on the call. All right. Let's get ready? to the questions. All right. So the first question, uh, and by the way, guys, in chat, if you want to be asking your questions to Jeremy, it's really, really fucking easy. Go to madrinascoffee.com forward slash products forward slash French dash toast. You can put it in your cart, and if you use code TOAST today, it is 30% off. So go ahead, and when you check out, you'll get a little bar where you can input your question as well as your Twitch username if you would like, and that's how you can submit your questions. Wow. We already have some questions coming in. So the first one is from Anonymous, and it's a pretty mild one to uh, kick things off. What was your favorite cartoon as a child? Favorite cartoon? What was your favorite cartoon as a child? Uh, um, as a child, as a child, what counts as a child? What age range would you say a child is? I would say the scientific answer to that is anywhere from the ages of three to 12. 12. So I'm like, because after that you became, you become a teenager. Oh, 12. Hmm. See, I started watching Sponge. Well, I'm gonna say SpongeBob. I didn't watch it. Watch that when I was like 12 or 13 because um, I think SpongeBob season one and season two is like the funniest content that's ever been on television. Wait, I don't. I mean, I watched a lot of SpongeBob too growing up, but I don't remember it in like seasonal chunks. I just remember the episodes in in individual increments i didn't realize there was like a seasonal flow to that content so between season two and season three they changed showrunner and it became garbage and like the art style is different the humor is different the like mm. it's terrible like after season two i always stop like i would rewatch it starting from season one as soon as it hits season three I, I turn it off because I can't look at SpongeBob the same way. Like they butcher it. Yeah. Who's your Who's your favorite character? Uh, Squidward. Well, when I was younger, Patrick. But as I got older, Squidward. Mm. Um, I used to think Squidward was like this grumpy old guy who never had fun. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm a grumpy know, old guy, I was gonna say in my thirties, I can <laughs> resonate with him more. I resonate with Squidward quite a bit as well for what it's worth. I'm a grumpy old woman as well. So, Do you have a favorite childhood TV show? Um, I watched all of it. I think growing up, I, I don't know, because where were you when you were a child? I know you were in, in quite a few places. But mm. specifically, ages of 3 and 12, where were you? Malaysia. Malaysia, okay. Yeah. I was in New York between the ages of 3 and 12, so I watched a lot of Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. So between the two, I watched, I definitely watched a lot of Spongebob. That was my jam. I really related a lot to Patrick at the time because I thought he was uh, relatable because I was a fucking idiot as well. Um, I also really liked Hey Arnold. I don't know if you ever watched Hey Arnold. Uh, yes, yes, football head. Yeah, yeah. I also have a weird shaped head, so I think I related a lot to him. Wait, what's weird about your head shape? It's it's uh, it's very large. <laughs> like to the point where my mom must have suffered. Like my brother's head is even larger than mine. The two of us combined, I'm surprised she's as healthy as she is. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Did she ever mention how difficult it was? No, she uh, she said that my brother was a lot more difficult and uh, I was I was easier, but she did apologize for the large head um, because, you know, genetics. So it, it's really her fault. So she took ownership of that, which I was grateful for. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> 
Okay. Are you ready for the next question? Yes. Okay. Next question. Um, fuck, I'm going to butcher this name, so please forgive me in advance. It is from a user in chat named Aru Chima. And the question is, what breed of dog slash cat would you like to have if you could have a pet? Slash cat if you'd like to have a pet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, well, I had a beagle uh, growing up. But that guy was a menace, because uh, they're a very outdoorsy kind of dog. Um, hello? Is who? Is it me or is she frozen? Is she frozen? Am I frozen? No, she's frozen, right? Oh, she, she blue screened. <laughs> Oh, wow, now there's two of us. Um, God, dogs, cats? I don't really want a pet. Uh, it's so much work to travel with an animal. Like after traveling in Japan for a while and seeing like how difficult it was, not like not difficult, but it's just like a lot of people who own pets on the trip kind of miss their animals after a while, which is totally understandable. Like Sid missed her dog. Jody missed her cats. Yvonne missed her cat. Um, just everyone was just missing their pets. Um, and I'm like, that, that can't be easy to be separated from your pet for so long, right? So I don't think I would ever get a pet for a long time. I would have to be like married with kids and those kids would want to have a pet for me to get my own pet. But I, I, I already get enough cat exposure, but my, one of my favorite dog breeds is, uh, the Corgi cause they got a nice butt and I'm a big fan of nice butts. So if I had to pick a dog with a good personality, I would pick Corgi. Hello? Yo. Welcome back. back. Apologies for that. Does your PC normally blue screen? Um, I've noticed it's aging like I am. So it started to do this a couple of times. Um, I think I, I purchased this PC like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I answered Corgi for my, uh, if I was going to pick a dog breed. Is it because of its butt? <laughs> Isn't that the best part of a Corgi? They're cute, butt. yeah, it was exactly because of the butt. See, like, I think everyone's on the same page. Like Corgi's best, uh, cuteness is like the butt. Mm, okay. Uh, is that your final answer? Yeah. You have Why a pet, think... right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have two cats and uh, and a dog. The the cats are two ragdolls. They're very, very large and chunky. And then my dog is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Um, but I've noticed something in the dogs that I've had. Before this breed, I had a pug. And there's something that the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and the pug have in common. Cavalier um, King Charles, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very cute. <laughs> um, so pugs have very, very flat faces and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels have flatter snouts. Uh-huh. And I've, and I've realized something. Uh-huh. I have a fucking flat face, so I think I've naturally gravitated towards the dogs that really represent me i think really putting yourself down on the sponsor Wait, screen with, what? The, with the big head and the flat face did i ever say that a large head means i'm ugly what are you trying to say about me that's fucking rude chat the fuck that's fucking rude you're right i apologize for her. are you saying a flat face is not attractive <laughs> you know what? you you're took right. it there bro i didn't say I, I, I was the one who <laughs> made that assumption no, but uh, 
I think I, I, I see a lot of myself when I look at my dogs. It wasn't even intentional. Just an observation I made one day staring at them. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. All right, this is a question that shouldn't be surprising because you expected this to happen. But the next question is, what was the highlight of your trip to Japan? Um, quick reminder to everyone in chat, by the way, if you guys want to ask your questions, go and purchase his coffee on MajunasCoffee.com and you can ask your questions there. Yeah, I believe the link in the panel below and the link in the chat box. So if you oh, type fuck. Ah, Sorry. See, it happens to everyone. It's not. I, it's I pulled like... the fucking Jeremy, man. <laughs> you can use uh, the link in chat or the panel below the stream if you want to buy it. By the way. Code Toast is now 40% off, so. 40? Yeah, man. Wow. I need to update the command. Okay, um, highlight of my Japan trip. The onsen was really hard to forget. Because of certain appendages or? Yeah, just, just, just the fact that we're all naked. Like, like, Pretty much all the closest guys in my life, I've seen them naked now. Do you feel closer to them now? Like, I feel like there's no, no better way to be vulnerable and intimate with someone than do that. I feel. Or is it the opposite? Can you not even look at them in the face anymore? <laughs> We're definitely closer. Um... I don't think you go through that with anyone and come out like you know them less. You definitely know them more, both mm -hmm. like emotionally and physically. Mm -hmm. um, it was just like you all knew what had to happen. Like everyone knew what had to happen and nobody could back out of it. Do you think other people were paying attention to appendages as much as you were? I wasn't paying attention to appendages. Bro, you fucking tweeted about it. I was talking about it. Like, I didn't want to pay attention to other people's appendages. I just didn't want them to pay attention to me. So your way, your solution to that was to keep talking about it? Yeah, so that, like, so that everyone knew, like, how I felt going in. And... I'm pretty sure everyone felt the same way. Someone said to me, it's like, I'm glad you're making such a big deal about this because I don't feel as nervous anymore knowing how nervous you are. Mm, who said that? Might have been John. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so was it like a uh, ripping off a Band-Aid type thing where you just had to drop the fucking towel? shabam or like what was uh, the process like i think it was more just like one by one as soon as the first person dropped Wait, <laughs> but we weren't like looking at each other when we did it we were just walking to it. it's like all right come on let's do it wait and so who dropped the towel first i think one of our uh, employees i think one of our um new hires actually wow brave yeah, brave well John did his pretty early as well, but um, he didn't have glasses or contacts on. <laughs> so technically he cheated. Like he can't see anything. And so, he didn't, wouldn't know if anyone else was looking at him. So if your vision was trash, do you think you would have been less nervous? No, I still would have been really nervous. Um, but... Uh, Michael made a joke and everyone laughed and that put me more at ease. What was the joke? <laughs> you just said in a really high voice, like standing in the corner, like hands between his legs. I'm shy. Can someone <laughs> go first? Oh, uh, dude, Michael's so good. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. And then so after that, we all got in and everyone just kept their eye level above the horizon yeah 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 how many how many uh dudes was this 12 that's wow that's a that's a lot of appendages 
Yeah, and that doesn't even include like the strangers because there was like other strangers there too. Was that like the best posture you've had because you were just like? Yes, it? yes, yes. Like I was sitting so straight in the water, and at some point I realized the area I was in, like scalding water, was shooting out, but I refused to move from that spot. Like that was the um, the nozzle where the hot water would come into, and I realized I was like sitting next to it. But I didn't want to move because I was all situated. And if I moved, that means I had to like uncross my legs. Okay. I also um, made sure that I was as hairy as I could be to kind of act as a natural <laughs> pixelation. Bro. Okay, we're getting into TMI territory, but I heard the opposite from my guy friends. They were like, no, you got to like shave that shit. So it you're... Yeah, yeah, by compar like if you shave it like by comparison, it looks better. But if there's a lot of hair there, it's like it's, it's like kind of like an animal, animal Crossing leaf, but yeah, a yeah. different color. Got it's it, got like it, got it. there could be a lot under there, yeah, but you yeah, don't yeah, know because yeah, yeah. it's all covered. Wait, so if you have a nozzle aiming straight at you, that sounds painful and floppy. Was that your experience at the onsen? Painful and floppy? Mm. Painful, yes, but it wasn't floppy because what I realized, okay, maybe this is just me, but my appendages is not long enough to flop. Ah! I thought that was normal for most guys. Oh, fuck. You know, we were like walking this, we were walking this line and, um, I, I didn't think I'd be the one to crack first. I'm not going to lie. I commend you, Jeremy. Um, so yeah, that was one of the highlights. Uh, biking up the river was very cute. It was like an anime scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nice segue. Nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear that about Japan. Because um, I was asking someone, like, how do you comp compare Japan to, you know, for example, a Korea? And the answer that I got was... Japan really does feel like an anime from everything from when you're at the city to when you're at smaller towns around the country to, you know, sitting by the river. Like these are all scenes you see in, in, in animes that you watch and that it very much did feel like a anime experience in that way, which was cool to hear. Do you yeah. concur? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things like you would recognize from animes. Um, like the scene by the river where like the protagonist is sitting there or like they confront the bully there um the neighborhoods like the the winding paths it's yeah. all like pretty real so that was really so cool. when you were when you were sitting by the river was there like anime music playing in your head as you were your own protagonist in your in your anime uh i actually put on my phone and played um sparkle from your name um <laughs> Have you seen that movie? I have. Yeah. Did you cry watching this movie? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Does a little bit mean like glistening or does a little bit mean one lone tear? Glistening. Yeah. Have you been to Japan? No, it's on my bucket list. Mm. I, I very much want to go. Now's the time because it's still like kind of locked down. So uh, you have to go through this whole process to get in and not everyone's willing to do it. Because once yeah. it lifts, everyone's going to force their way in. And Got it's gonna be it. like super crowded. So this is the best time to go when the, like I don't think Japan will never have this little amount of tourists ever again. All right. And this wasn't your first time, right? No, this was my first time. Oh, this was your first time. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Like people think I I've been there because last time with another group of OTV yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that one went a little differently. Yeah. It it did. Yeah. It's a great segue for our next question. <laughs> the next question is, what's, uh, what's one thing that makes you really angry? One thing that makes me angry. Um, hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Angry, angry? I mean, I've yelled a few times before. I think I've yelled three times in my life. Um, one time was, uh, my, uh, how do I say this? I don't like 
incompetence or deceit, especially in the gaming space. I get really angry when someone acts unprofessionally um, because the way I see gaming is like we're all very lucky to like work in gaming. I think working in gaming is like one of the best thing to do in the world to play video games, right? Mm -hmm. And for someone to like try and cheat or like try and take advantage of like people who are genuinely into games and love video games like really upset me because it's like you're ruining such a good thing for everyone mm. um so yeah because like in the gaming space like with agencies and managers a lot of people kind of like take advantage of others mm. and that really triggers me at times uh, i hate it when people are unreasonable in the way they communicate i think uh language is really important the language we you we use to talk to each other I hate the word sure. You probably uh, have heard of me say this, but like every time someone says sure, I get like really triggered and like it, it gets even worse based on like how indifferent they are. It's like, hey man, I'm going to this uh, cool cafe that I found. You want to join me? And they say just sure. I'm like, okay, it's fine. I'm going to ask someone else. And they get offended if, if I respond like that. I just control left sure in our discord conversation. Guess how many results came up? Yeah, you don't, I don't remember you saying sure that often. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 so, you, you never responded sure. No, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think if anything, I would go sure thing. Yeah, like I'm looking around. Uh, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure. Well, you yeah, say yeah, you're yeah. not sure very often. <laughs> I'm not sure you I wasn't <laughs> sure if I wanted to be sure if but yeah you never yeah you never uh typed just sure I've typed like sure discord works mm. uh, you type sure thing but you have never typed sure and I think I would remember if you ever typed sure because I remember every time someone types it's just sure to me I um, think my my preferred acknowledgement is roger that mm-hmm You've definitely seen me do a lot of that. Yes, you do a lot of rogering. And you also <laughs> say a lot of for what it's worth. Oh, I do. <laughs> yeah. When I'm upset about something, you would say, right, for what it's worth. And that calms me down a little bit. Oh, you know, does it? It's like, okay, she wants me to see both sides. It's like, whatever. Mm. But yeah, you say for what it's worth. I do do it uh, for what it's worth a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, sure is definitely my number one. Also, uh, I tell this to Scar all the time when I ask for his opinion and like, Hey, what do you want to eat for dinner? And he says, I don't care. I always oh. tell him, Scar, you should say, I don't mind. Or like, I'm okay with anything. Mm -hmm. Cause like when you say, I don't care, it's kind of like, you don't give a shit about yeah. like, like this thing I'm asking you about. Question mm -hmm. in a situation like that, do you think it's on the friend to understand that that's not what Skara means? Or do you think it's on Skara to change how he talks? I think it's... Because I think there's a valid argument for both. Yeah, I think it's on Skara in that scenario, mainly because I can understand it, but n not everyone would understand it. Like, if he had that conversation with someone else and he said, I don't care to someone, they're like, oh, that's kind of like uh, distance of you. Um, I know Scar, like I live with him. I know what he means. Like Scar is like, I just generally want everyone to have a good time and like mm -hmm. everyone to like do what they want. And mm -hmm. like, I know that, but I'm almost like, Scar, not everyone's going to understand it. Like me, uh, like when you new, meet new people and someone asks you something like that, you know, make sure you're not saying, I don't care. To be fair. I think saying, I don't care in person versus over text comes across very, very differently. Cause I, th I think I've seen him do it in person. Mm -hmm. And when he does it in person, it's quite clear. That's not what he means. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause, cause he'll look very happy and jovial as he, as he says, he doesn't care. Yeah. Um, I think saying in person definitely gives like a lot of context. Yeah. 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 yeah like with sure. Someone can go like, sure. Like that one's pretty good. <laughs> sure. Sure. Wait, but over so... text is just sure. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like you're alluding to the fact that you don't like passive aggression then. Yes, I hate passive aggressiveness. I hate, I hate it. 
I just that's like that that makes me angry and it kind of sucks because like in the streaming space everyone is super passive aggressive people subtweet all the time and I'm like losing my mind over it because it's like something's pissing you off can you just either say it or don't say it and like own up to it when you get called up for it a lot of people like do this passive aggressive thing where they're like they say something a little snidey Mm. and like they get called up for it and they're like whoa i was just i was talking about something else why you gotta like get in my business about it i hate that this is why i don't use social media anymore (laughs) that's smart um okay the next question is is interesting it's from a user named Frankie Kicks, who asks, do you want to have a family like a wife and kids? Uh, and honestly, how many years of streaming do you think you have left before pursuing your other life goals? Thanks for the stream. Uh, ooh. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty deep question. I don't know. I think, ooh, I haven't really thought about it. I think I'd be happy like, with a wife and kids or without a wife and kids i do think about dying like who's gonna be around me when i die huh because interesting my friends might all be dead and even if they're alive and i'm like dying, dying at like 80 years old they're not making the trip out to the hospital to hold my hand as i pass who's gonna hold my hand so is your main reason for wanting a wife and kids so that you have a guaranteed <laughs> presence around you as you pass <sighs> <laughs> um hmm. I want to die feeling fulfilled and not scared. So then it's less about who's around you and more about whether you feel happy with what you've done. Yeah. Like I don't think I'd be very like happy with all the money I have, but I mm. think I would be happy with like if I change the world for the better i can be like yeah i did good then then one additional question to that do you think having a wife and kids is a personal definition in jeremy's life or fulfillment in life Mm, probably i feel like kids would give people a lot of that isn't that why people have kids Mm, i think people have kids for a lot of reasons fulfillment (laughs) right like if the marriage is on the rocks you like let's have some kids or they didn't fucking use a condom you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think I think kids and why people have kids, it's 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 a pretty loaded topic. Um, mm. I know plenty of people who didn't plan it and are very fulfilled. I know people who did plan it and aren't fulfilled from it. So I think it is a very personal decision. But I think that's why I asked if you think it's part of your personal definition. Uh, not like I think I'm very like evenly split on it i can imagine a life without kids uh i do want kind of like a life partner kind of deal like we don't Mm -hmm. have to get married married but like just it's much easier it's easier to go through life with someone um that you can rely on um for traveling for work for like emotional support and finding that person who will go through all of that with you is i think very fulfilling for everyone I can ask 10 million questions on top of that, but there's actually a lot of fucking questions coming in. So (laughs) um, I think we need to speed it along because I just realized it's 635. Okay. Next question is from a user named is Leon here. And the question is, who is your quote unquote hero? Oh, my hero. What was my hero? Uh, When I was a kid, I really liked The Rock. You watch WWE or F yeah. or whatever it was called back then? WWE. So did I. Uh, who do you have a favorite wrestler? Um I didn't have a favorite, but The Rock was obviously like the eyebrow thing. I can do the eyebrow thing. Oh, I can do that. Oh wow, you're really good at it. Yeah, I would practice. You know, I told you my vision is trash, right? I think mm-hmm. if I took my contacts off, I'd be like, is it I can kind of, I can kind of see doing, um, the rock. Do you remember like the giant? Um, there was the also a guy. Show. In, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then there was, um, triple X stone cold, Steve Austin. Oh yeah. Um, did your older siblings practice wrestling moves on you? Did you watch with them? Yeah. Yeah. They did. So you were the victim. Yeah. I was the youngest one. 
Yeah. yeah My older happen, brother please? also practiced moves on me. Uh, the, the big secret is that's when I was still flexible. So the secret was none of it actually hurt, but I pretended like it did so that he would be sad. As, wow, that sounds kind of fucked up, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> did he did have you, a go-to move? Yeah, uh, he liked... Um, I think there's like a pile driver... And uh, I think there was another one called like a screwdriver. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of drivers. <laughs> did your uh, did your brother practice any specific moves on you? Uh, he did one called the. Uh, I think the it's called the Wall of Jericho, where he you're on the floor face down, and he just grabs your leg and lifts it up and like bends your spine backwards. But it didn't ah! really hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think I had that done on me as well. Yeah, and but like, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, like because uh, they're selling it on camera. But when he did it to me, it's like this doesn't feel like anything. No, it's just kind of uncomfortable being upside down like that. Yeah. Um. Wow. Next question is from someone named Prongs. I wonder if they're a Harry Potter fan. The question is, how is it to touch grass when you stayed back and didn't go to Korea? Um. It was good. Uh. I like having some alone time because when you travel with 20 people it's hard because it, it's always that thing where you're like do we wait for them do we go first are they gonna meet us here and in japan everything is super small every restaurant seats like four people at a table max mm. uh every bar has a max capacity of like 10 people yeah so like it was impossible to like get anything big coordinated stuff going on so like having time alone I remember just walking through the subway station by myself for the first time. I was like, wow, this is really nice. Like, nobody knew who I was. Like, nobody, I was, wasn't waiting for someone. I was just, like, walking around. So, it was good. It does make me want to travel again. But it also made me realize traveling alone is kind of, it's definitely hard if you don't speak the language. Mm, um, did you run like, into that a lot alone? In- uh, yeah, towards the end, I'm like, normally I'm really good at isolating myself, but... Mm-hmm. When I couldn't speak the language, it was even harder, which I did not expect. I thought it would be fine. But, like, because I couldn't have, like, any conversations with anybody, uh, Mm. yeah, that made it, made me realize if I'm going to travel, I probably need at least one person. When you were, when you were alone, did you, like, plan your itinerary out or did you just go outside and walk? Uh, I would plan things out, like, mostly for content. Um, mm. It's like, I'm going to go here and, like, eat this and do this thing. Um, but it was all pretty much by myself. I did go out two nights with um, these people from Trash Taste, uh, mm-hmm. which is, like, a English VTube, I mean, not VTube, uh, podcast group. So mm-hmm. that was nice to have, like, human interaction. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was mostly just going to places. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, there's like we ten at least ten more questions we need to get through. All right. Next question is from Chang. Out of all the big games you've played lately, what was your least favorite game? Least favorite. Um. Uh, uh. I don't. I don't really have a least favorite. Like, if I don't like playing it, I just don't play it. Um. I kind of lost a little interest in Among Us just because, um, like, my Among Us interest really does just come and go. So, uh, it, it, I'm gonna it, like Among Us isn't my least favorite, but it's definitely the one I get asked to play the most, and it's one mm. where I'm very much like I will play it when I want to play it, mm-hmm. and please shut up and spamming like. I am never going to play Among Us just because my chat spams Among Us. That's how it never mm. worked. Like, when I first quit Among Us, people were just nonstop spamming. And I, like, did not touch that shit for one year until I felt mm. like it again. Um, so, yeah, like, Among Us is, like, good and bad because it just attracts all these, like, weird-ass viewers that only want to watch Among Us. And then you, I explained to them, it's like, bro, I'll play it when I want to play it. But it's not good enough for them. Mm. Like, it's like, no, Among Us guy, you have to play Among Us. Well, lucky for them, there's actually plenty of videos of you playing that game on YouTube, so they should go check your YouTube channel out. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's like 200 of them at least. Exactly. But there's no enough. fucking way they watched all 200 of those videos, so I'm sure they have a backlog they can watch. Um, the next question is from extra underscore chunky, and the question is, at any cafe, what is your preferred coffee order? 
Preferred coffee order. I used to really like um, just black coffee because mm -hmm. no calories, no nothing. And I wouldn't drink too much of it with the sugar in it. But lately I've been like, look, life is kind of short and I don't want to hate what I'm drinking. So I add a little bit of soy milk with a little bit of sugar. But yeah, I, I don't like anything too milky or too sugary. What about you? I am, I think, exactly the same as you. There are days when I have just straight black, like iced Americano or something. Mm -hmm. um, but recently, I've just been dabbling with different flavors, um, like one pump or two pumps of syrup versus the like four to eight that, that different brands may put in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's why I like yours, because I can just like control the water and the amount of powder. Next question from Such Is Life. What is your favorite off-stream activity? And forgive me in advance, I'm going to cringe as I say the second part. <clears throat> Parentheses. Also, Sue, you're looking great today. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your favorite off-stream activity? Did you have to read that? Did they say to read the second part out loud? Um, no, but I like to be an honest person. And you specifically <laughs> said you don't like deceit. Favorite off-stream activity? Um... Sometimes I will, um, how do I say this? I think I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, be, be fucking careful. <laughs> Sometimes I would just relax with a nice, uh, a nice meal and watch um, yeah. movie recaps oh, on, okay. on YouTube where it's just a guy narrating like entire movies out loud so i don't have to watch it yeah that's your favorite activity nowadays yeah because it's just like i turn my brain off yeah, yeah yeah i like turning my brain off too yeah i i really like those channels as well um it's really nice to after you're done working just mm -hmm. toggle this shit off and listen to other people be smart they do all the work for you so you don't have exactly to watch it. exactly Next question from Mega Man 8 Bit. How are you dealing with jet lag if you're even dealing with it at all? Um, well, even in, like my schedule has always been kind of like upside down. So when I was in Japan, it was good and then became upside down again. So now that I'm back, it's fine because I was already like my schedule upside was already. Down. Yeah. So now I'm back to being normal again. How did that work? Like, when you did activities, how did that work with having an upside down schedule? Is everything just open 24-7? Uh, no, only 20, uh, only 7-Eleven was open mm. uh, at night. So a lot of my meals were at 7-Eleven, which is fine because 7-Eleven is amazing. In Japan. In Japan, yes. Yeah, American 7-Elevens have a lot of uh, improving to do. It's like a whole different... I don't understand how they're owned by the same company. I know, it's actually insane. I actually was shocked because the first time I went to a McDonald's in Asia, it was in Korea, and it was the first time I got a Big Mac that looked like a burger. Instead mm -hmm. of like, like in America, you open the thing and lettuce is over here, the bun is over here, and I'm, I'm very used to having to make it again myself. But in, mm -hmm. in Korea, it fucking came out with a cardboard ring. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was so perfectly put together. I was baffled. Yeah, it's, Americans definitely do things differently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This next question is from Anonymous. Are there any other countries you'd like to visit in the future? Uh, I would really want to go back to Malaysia. Mm. When's the last uh, time you've been? Since I left for Canada, which is ooh, 17 years ago. Yeah. You still have family there? No. Got it. I just want to eat the food again and like be reminded of my childhood. Mm. Yeah. Are your fondest childhood memories from Malaysia? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I only grew up in Malaysia. And when I moved to Canada, I was like 12 and I was like mm. awkward and bullied. So it was, uh, it was like, man, Canada's like, man, but Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Then in Malaysia, were you not bullied? Was it, was it? No, fun? I was a cool kid in Malaysia. Hey, let's go. Like I, I remember like a girl had a had a party, 
and she only invited two guys and i was one of them and i was like oh shit like i was one of those like young chads <laughs> and i moved to uh canada and that was all gone because i didn't speak like i spoke such terrible english i got bullied mm. and made fun of yeah but yeah I, I used to be a chad you know at least you have a memory of being a chad there's many, many people who haven't had that experience. I, I like to think I'm like a chat now, you know. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a chat inside of them. Sorry for the cringe comment. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> uh, are you going to move to Japan or another foreign country from Black Snow 555? Uh, maybe. I don't know. After leaving the country, I'm like, why do I stay in L.A. where, like, if I leave, my house i might get like stabbed downtown la you did choose a a particular neighborhood that's that's a little sus yeah yeah like the apartment's nice but i realized i can't leave my apartment um because there's like homeless people everywhere so before you lived in dtla how often did you leave your house before then? Uh, never. Because, like, L.A. is super unwalkable. Mm, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Like, the distance between every neighborhood is, like, 20 minutes of walking. Yeah. Um, so, and then when I was in Japan, I'm like, I can walk anywhere. I can, like, just go out and walk for like 30 minutes and it will be fine. I'll hit a subway station and I can go anywhere. Uh, public transportation is so good. Yeah. And in LA, it's just like really, really, really hard. Would you want to live in another city outside of LA? Or at that point, are you just thinking another country? Uh, hmm. I think I'd be down to live in another city, but I, w I would want to experience something new and go to uh, another country. Got it. So before I bring up this next question, I saw this question just a couple of times in chat. So if you're curious how the fuck these people are getting their questions answered, it's quite simple. Just go to madrinascoffee.com, purchase one of Toast's coffee tubs, and you can ask your questions there. And right now, Code Toast is 40% off. So it's the best fucking time to do it. And the next question is from Josie L. L. I'm so sorry, Josie, I butchered that. But the question is, are you thinking about other streaming ideas having to do with travel? Uh, other travel streaming ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, when I was in Japan, I didn't even stream. Like, I barely streamed. Um, I think the only times I streamed was from my hotel room. And that was for sponsored streams, so... I don't like streaming while traveling because it's super stressful to fiddle with the backpack, especially if I don't speak the language because there's been mm. a lot of times like where other people are streaming and people would say like, oh, sorry, we don't allow like cameras in here. And then like, oops, you don't have any content. So like streaming while traveling is super hard. Um, and you would have to go with someone so that you have a cameraman and do like have things to bounce off. But mm -hmm. Uh, no, I don't like streaming travel content. It's just not my thing. I like playing video like, games. Do you like vlogging it? You, uh, I think I would. I think I just don't like it when there's someone else vlogging it. I'm someone who's like very particular about like the kind of content I put out. Like, it's like content um, that I don't want them to be able to find anywhere else. So mm. when I traveled with like a big group and people are vlogging, I just don't vlog at all. Got it. So what's an example of a moment you did vlog in Japan? Uh, I went to a love hotel by myself. What the? F Do you know what a love hotel is? Yes. Did you go to one of those places? Uh, by the way, all of my knowledge is from watching K-dramas. And in this one K-drama I watched, they went to a love hotel where you could like pick the theme of the room. Mm. Like one room was like, an ice room and then another room was like a water room mm, yeah um, i didn't have that your your love hotel was themed yeah uh the one i chose was a like a hawaiian themed one with like sand and like 
There was sand in the hotel room? Uh, in the lobby decoration and like palm trees. Got it. And then yeah. was, were, were the decorations in the room like it's palm like, trees? It's very woody, like a lot of wood, a lot of like, yeah. Did you enjoy the experience by yourself? It was very nice. It was very nice. And wait, why did you? S hmm? Yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was by myself. I, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, uh, it was very professional. Like the the staff was super professional about it as well. Like yeah, I, it's 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 efficiency because they yeah. understand discretion. They understand you just want to get in, get out. Blah blah, yeah. blah 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 blah. Japan is all about efficiency. It's like, well, here's the money. Here's your key. It's on this floor and Dude, see you later. 100%. Um, Korea is like that as well to the point where my dad, when he moved back to Korea, his personality changed. He used to have a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, a, he's super fucking impatient now. And I think that just speaks to the efficiency of Korea. He's not used to waiting because uh, you don't wait a lot in Asia. Mm -hmm. have you ever do you ever feel like Korean people are like more just impatient? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, being around impatient people probably made him more impatient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he definitely the the culture there one hundred percent rubbed off on him. It's because like everything in Korea is about like speed and efficiency. So no one is used to waiting longer than like five. Even five minutes is a long time to wait for anything in Korea. Yeah. So yeah, I. It, it's a pro and a con because it means you live in a country where things are truly that fast. But it was shocking for me to see my gentle father change into this angry, impatient man. I was like, I was like, whoa, 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 relax. I'm okay. I'm American. We're slow as fuck. I'm used to this. And he was like, no, this is fucking unacceptable. I was like, okay, my dad has changed. This is kind of scary. Um, this next question, I think you kind of answered it a little bit earlier, but you might have other moments that are relevant to it. It is from a user named Yev Pavko. And the question is, did you have any embarrassing moments in Japan? Yes, yes. Fuck. <laughs> Good I, job, you Pavlik. We've told this story before, but okay. In the states, I'm very used to Ubering. I only Uber. Mm -hmm. And with Uber, it's like you call it on your app, you get the place, and that's it. That's it. In Japan, we do taxis. Mm hmm. Right. When you say taxi, you mean like just like. Regular taxi. Like a, like a yellow taxi. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like you get in, you have to like, okay, got it. The main difference is that you have to pay them when you leave the car. Did you fucking just get out? So I took Sid, Broden, and Jody to this fancy bar and we took a taxi there and I'm in the front seat and I called the taxi and I'm taking them. So like, the, trying to be I'm, a Chad. yeah, I'm supposed to pay. I can't tell the story is so cringe, man. <laughs> Cause like, and then like we get to the place and I, I just start walking out. It's like, all right, thanks. And I just left first and I turned around and they're not behind me. I'm like, what's taking so long? And I come back out and they tell me, oh, we haven't paid it. But like, while I was gone, a whole embarrassing thing happened to Sydney where the guy was trying to give her the bill, but because she doesn't, she thought I paid, she thought it was just a receipt. So she's like, no, I'm okay. Thank you. Like, I'm good. So from this taxi driver perspective, these four foreigners just got in his car and left without paying. And when he's trying to get us to pay for the taxi, we're just like, ha, ha, we're okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and yeah, like I feel really bad because it's not me experiencing that embarrassment. It was mm -hmm. someone else. Um, so yeah, it was embarrassing all around. And he had to get like um, one of the show, um, bellboys to explain what he was saying. Oh no, that's even worse. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, 
Yeah, I, I'd say that's that's pretty. That's ten out of ten. That's a good one. Yeah. Hey, the good news is you'll never ever make this fucking mistake again. I almost made it again <laughs> in Japan because, like, we got off and I'm like, okay, am I forgetting anything? I got my wallets, and then I looked up and saw the dash, and there's like that bill ticker thing. I'm like, yes, I need to pay, because you're just so used to not paying. In I America, because nobody yeah. really taxi anymore. Everyone just Ubers, but there's yeah. no Ubers in Japan really. So, um, yeah, no, it's kind of burned into my brain. Very valid, but valid burning. Um, yeah, I think I got read on your behalf when I was listening to that story. Yeah. All right, we have three minutes left, and we still have five more questions. So let's do a speed run. Okay. All right, this is from Jenny Cho. How do you cope with the stress from constant pressure, creating new content, and staying relevant? Uh, I've kind of just stopped caring about it too much. Like, I try and do bigger stuff, like the Rust event coming up tomorrow. That's a big stuff. And um, we have some other stuff planned that is more interesting than just streaming. Mm -hmm. I think I'm fairly confident in my ability to, like, stay relevant, um, whether in front of the camera or behind the camera. So what I've been doing is, like, I don't stream unless, like, I want to, or if this is sponsor obligations, mm -hmm. um, cause I know like I could stream every day and be like relevant, but the stress is just not worth it at this point. And like, I shouldn't subject myself to it. So yeah, uh, it's just like, I don't do things I don't want to do anymore. I think that term relevant also means something different to someone who's, for example, just starting out versus someone like yourself who's been doing this for a while. So. Next question is from the Francisms. Will you slash OTV travel to more places? Question mark. Any chance of Canada? Uh, I don't think we'll ever do like an OTV Canadian trip because it's just like it's right next door. But I do plan to go back to Canada every now and then. Um, maybe bring a couple people with me. There's a mm. few Canadians in OTV, but not Canada. And we'll definitely do another trip to another country. Got it. Next question from Miracle036. What are your favorite Vandal and Knife skins in Valorant? Oh, I like default because when you see someone with a default skin, you get scared. It's like, oh, this guy's like an Omega Smurf chat that doesn't buy skins. Um, yeah. I also don't have skins, but it's because I'm a stingy motherfucker. But I have the Riot gun buddy because I worked the first Valorant event, First Strike. Uh-huh. So get... people get fucking confused because I have no skins and then I have this the riot, the gun buddy, and they're like, How did you get this? And I'm not using microphone, I'm that bitch because I I every, as soon as they hear I'm a woman, they're like, You're so fucking bad. So I try not to use a microphone. They're like, bro, they're like fucking tailing me around the map. How'd you get this? I'm like, don't talk to me. Uh, you don't have any skin? <laughs> nah. Uh, but you have the riot buddy. Yeah. I feel like people who know the riot buddy are people who like take Valorant like really seriously watches esports watches streams yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah i think a casual person wouldn't recognize it yeah this this guy was he was on my ass just how'd you get it bro bro how'd you get it I'm like fuck off i don't <laughs> want to talk to you um next question is from creed how long will it take you to forget about all of us once you have your breakout role in shang chi 2 uh really fast like i don't stay in contact with any of my friends from high school and university after I went into this life and my goal is that one day I become so famous I don't keep in contact with anyone from this era of my life got it because that's kind of no that's kind of how you know your next level now do you think that makes you a good person to do that I think it has no bearing on morality <laughs> yeah. he's just fucking leaving us Fucking, fucking so sad. But it's like, do most people hang out with their homies from high school or university? Yeah, man. Once they, mm, do you? I just went to a fucking high school wedding two weeks ago. Okay. I saw, I saw friends I have not seen since 2008. It's like old times. Do you think uh, XQC hangs out with his high school buddies? I do not know anything about XQC. So he's I would not know that I mean, answer. He's probably busy streaming. But Wait. I also think he's doing nothing but streaming because he streams a lot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, have you, are you familiar with uh, the entire series of Naruto? 
Um, I'm gonna be really fucking honest with you. All I know about Naruto is he runs with his arms backwards. <laughs> I see you didn't tune into any of my stream at the end of uh, 2021, huh? You know... Uh, I, I had already left Twitch by then. I was gonna use that as an excuse. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have no excuse. No, I wasn't watching Naruto with you. Well, there's this guy called Sasuke Uchiha mm -hmm. who leaves the village of um, the leaf in search of greater power. Okay. Yeah. And he found it because he cut all his ties with his friends at the leaf village. So you think you're Sasuke? Yeah, I'm Sasuke Uchiha in this scenario. Got it. Yeah. So uh, when are you going to make that decision to leave the village? Um, as soon as I became famous. Until then, I'm going to hang around. Mm -hmm. But as soon as like I hit that next level of fame, um, I'm leaving the village. Got it. Yeah. Well, until that day, <laughs> I'm happy to have been in the village with you. <laughs> Chat, the fuck? All right, we have like four questions left, so let's let's zoom past this. All right. Uh, PK Mulas, any spots you recommend in Japan? Uh, everything I found, I found off TripAdvisor and Google. They don't use Yelp there; they use TripAdvisor and Google. So look for anything with high reviews there. Okay. Any place that st stood out to you? I went to the bar from the movie Lost in Translation, and it's at the very top of the Park Hyatt, um, and it was really nice. And was, uh, was this the bar that you left the taxi? It was. Okay, was. I just had to ask. <laughs> uh, next question is actually not a question. It's just from Sue Mama. Sue Mama, Sue Mama, no question. Thank you, Sue Mama says. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is from Ryanon88. What brings the boys to the yard? I don't know what kind of answer he's looking for, man. It's milk, bro. Milkshakes. Are people too young to get that reference now? No, I mean, no, I, I, I understood what, what the reference is. I just, like, I don't know how, how to answer that. <laughs> I think... Your uncomfortable response is exactly what he was looking for. And then now we just have one question left. It is from a lovely user by the name of Sire. And I feel like you kind of hinted at this, but the question is, what are your plans post OTV slash streaming? And that wraps up the questions for today's Madrini segment. Uh, I want to run content. I want to be like a content director. And this these Rust events I've been doing is kind of like, dipping my toe into it because mm. uh, I mentioned this earlier in our call. Um, I kind of see myself more as a translator more than anything where I'm translating like corporate speak and production speak and like viewer speak and like essentially being the middleman of figuring out, okay, what is the most optimal decision and setup so that everyone's as happy as they can be. So Russ is the same as like, I'm talking to Twitch and Twitch is like, well, we got sponsors. By the way, I was in a call with Twitch and I straight up asked them, I know you're selling sponsors against this event. I want to know, are you guys selling five days worth of sponsors or like one day's worth? Cause this, like this event takes place over five days mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm. sponsor. Is this satisfying like five mm -hmm. events worth of requirement? And they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I'm like, okay, that's good to know because I know how much I'm doing for you guys then. Cause most creators, they're like, yeah, I'll do a Twitch Rivals. And it's like, that's one day of sponsors locked up. So I asked them, I was like, is this five days of sponsors I'm locking up for you guys? And this gives me more confidence in asking for things. Like, if I'm locking up five days of sponsors, I want this, I want this, I want this. And mm -hmm. they've been super nice about it. They have given me everything I asked for. Um, and it's like figuring out what the audience wants. It's like, well, the audience wants drama. They don't want like something like peaceful and fun. They like drama. Okay, that's good to know. How do I get like... Drama streamers. Well, XQC, he's the biggest streamer and he loves drama. The Spanish people, tons of drama from last time. Let's get him involved. Let's get them involved. How do I get XQC involved? Well, and how do I make sure this event just goes well? Well, I know H-June and I know uh, Mendo and they love like organizing shit on like this. So I asked them, hey, can you like help me out here? And they've been doing the majority of the rules. 
and I just sit here and like I'm just a guy who's delegating. Mm. Um, so, what time is the event go live tomorrow? It's 10 a.m. and I have no idea how it's gonna go. I think it's gonna go so up and down and up and down, up and down. It's gonna be. I really don't know what to expect. It's gonna. I promise you, within the first three hours, it's gonna be a huge drama event already. Well, you guys heard it here first. Make sure to tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash disguised toast for that rest action. Um, there's going to be a lot of drama, he says. Does that make you nervous or do you like it at the same time? Um, it makes me nervous and I like it. Because um, it's, I think humans are very fun to like study because everyone has their own wants and needs and biases and opinions and like communication style every every like person is a puzzle mm. and trying to get like 160 different puzzles together and trying to solve it so that max content is available is is very nerve-wracking because you can't mm -hmm. account for so much humans right but it's also like it's a great recipe for disaster which is a good thing when it comes to content like this so basically, you would like to be the person spectating this controlled chaos, and hopefully the chaos doesn't go too out of control, but just the right amount of out of control. Yes, yes, yes. Because if this event goes bad, it's like a stain on my reputation. Mm. And that's something I value a lot. I think, I think it'll be great. Yeah. I think it'll be great. Yeah. Okay, so you know how I told you my seal broke? Yeah. I've been holding back the P and you can't tell, but I've been shaking my leg for over an hour because mm -hmm. the classic move to keep yourself from peeing is, is shake your leg. Um, and I'm shaking it like a jackhammer. Um, so I really need to go pee. Well, thank <laughs> you very much for hosting this Q and A. Yeah, of course. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Make sure to tune in tomorrow, twitch.tv slash toast at 10 a.m. Pacific. Thank you very much, Madrinas. Make sure, if you haven't done so, to purchase a tub of Disguised Toast coffee at madrinascoffee.com. Go to the Signature Series. You'll see his lovely face smack dab straight in the middle. Use code TOAST for 40 fucking percent off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Sue. She's a professional. That's why she gets paid the big bucks. Uh, poof.